My dear friends, mass will begin in about one minute. So if you are following us at this mass today, we will be praying for you. We will be praying for your families. We will be praying for your communities. And praying for all those who are on the front lines, our doctors, our nurses, our healthcare workers, and all those who are risking everything, our first responders, our EMS workers, especially those who have taken as a result of the risk they take every day to, to serve our sick, our sick ones. We pray that God may rest them and that God may give them, give them healing for those who are still recovering. We pray for our dead, pray for all those who have died, pray especially for many deaths in, in Europe, in Italy, and in Spain, and those who are dying in our own countries here, that God may rest them, that God may bring healing to their loved ones. We pray for governments around the world that they may come together at a time like this and forget our bickerings and work together for the survival of our race. We pray for all others uh, who are concerned at this time. We don't want to forget those who are celebrating their birthdays or some anniversaries or some important event in their lives. We also want to pray for you. This is a difficult time. You aren't able to celebrate. But God may give you another chance to celebrate your days. And um, if you are here at Walter Reed, we want to pray for you. We want to ask God's healing for you. And we pray that God may be with you and help you recover sooner and faster. Our opening hymn will be Table of Plenty. to the feast of heaven on earth, come to the table of plenty, God will provide for all that we need, here on the table of plenty, oh come and sit at my table, where sin and seen us our friends. I wait to welcome the lost and lonely to share the cup of my love. Come to the feast of heaven on earth. Come, Come to, to the table earth. of plenty. God will provide for all that we need. Here at the table of plenty. Mm. 
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, to prepare ourselves for this Mass of the fifth Sunday of Lent, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy, forgiveness, and healing. Lord Jesus Christ, you bring healing to a sickened world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, you bring hope to a despairing world. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, you bring courage to a scared and frightened world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we who walk eagerly in that same charity with which out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the book of Ezekiel. God says, The Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you right from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O oh my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live, and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The gospel, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O oh Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness that you may be revered. With, with the, the Lord, Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord, my soul trust in his word. More than sentinel wait for the dawn, let Israel wait for the Lord. With, with the, the Lord, Lord there, there is mercy, mercy and fullness of redemption. For with the Lord, for with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. With, with the, the Lord, Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Our second reading is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit, if only the spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to but if Christ is in you, although the body be dead because of sin, the spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your own mortal bodies also 
through his spirit dwelling in you. My dear people, the gospel of the Lord. Praise Thank you, to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you, O Lord. Now a man was ill. Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go to Judea. Our friend Lazarus is asleep, and I am going to awaken him. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he is asleep, he would be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death while they thought he meant ordinary sleep. So then Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died. And I am glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas said, Thomas called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, Let us go also to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away. Many of the Jews who had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here and is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with, Mary, with her in the house comforting her saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, 
come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind have done something so that this man not, would not have died? Jesus said, But talked again, he came forward to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus asked, Take away the stone. Martha said, Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what, had, what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, as the world is encircled by a cloud, a cloud of despair, a cloud of fear, a cloud of uncertainty, where no one is sure where this, all of this is going to end, when it's going to end, how it's going to end. We continue to hope and pray that God will send His Spirit, will send His Spirit to our researchers who are seeking a cure for this disease. Now, why are we doing all of that? We must constantly draw strength and courage from God's word. What God has said across generations. And the Bible tells us that God's word is alive and active. That means it's not stale. It's not some dead word. What God said thousands of years ago is still effective, active, and, and productive today. And so we will go back to God's word and find strength and find what God is thinking and what God is saying at a time like this. Today we are confronted in the Bible passage and even in the first reading with texts that reference exactly the kind of situation that we are dealing with right now. In, in the Gospel reading we hear of this family, the family of three. Mary, Lazarus, and Martha. It, it does appear this is a family that has experienced a lot of losses. It's a chance they lost their parents early on, very, very young. Maybe to a pestilence, who knows. But they were not so old. They were young people. Looks like they were all unmarried women and men. So they lived together in one place. They were friends of Jesus. Now, one of their brothers, as you all know, at a time like this, it was a man who was the breadwinner of his sisters or his wife and children. So not only had this family lost their parents, looks like they were losing their brother. You can imagine how Mary felt. Her grief had no bounds. I'm sure she was questioning, like many would question at this time, why is God allowing this to happen to us? Why is God not hearing us? This was even worse because she had sent words, she and her sister had sent words to Jesus, to God. The man you love is ill. And they were hoping that he would show up almost immediately and maybe do something. Because they knew they had seen him do a lot of things. 
The Jews knew he had raised the dead. He had cleansed lepers. He had healed, opened the eyes of the blind. He had walked on top of water, fed 5,000 with uh, five belly loaves and two fish. There was nothing impossible for this man to not do. And yet when they sent words to Jesus to come, the Bible said he delayed for two more days. And when he arrived, it was four days already. So you could imagine how Mary and Martha were processing all of this. Does he really care about us? Do we matter to him? If we did matter to him, why did he show up the moment he heard that Lazarus was dead? Why is he showing up now? Now, these are all the questions I'm sure a lot of us will be asking ourselves. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after, maybe the week after, maybe the month after, maybe the year after. My heart breaks to admit the fact that this scenario that is playing out here in this gospel will be the lot of some. My prayers is not so many. Because in some family, right now, as we speak, whether in Europe or here in our own country, there is a family whose life has changed, like this family, right now, as we speak, because someone has passed. There's a family that is grieving, that is asking questions that Mary and Martha were asking right now. That family could be mine, could be yours, anytime. We are just not certain about this right now. You realize how Jesus takes the time to show up. I don't know why he did that. But he said himself, this was to let God's glory be visible and be seen. That means he knew all the while what he wanted to do. And if Lazarus died, or any member of our families dies. God knows that. Only God knows what plan he has for every one of us. My prayers are that when that happens, like Mary and like Martha, we will not lose our faith in Jesus Christ. Because realize that even though Lazarus had died, when Jesus came and spoke to Martha, Martha says, I believe, I know that you are the light. I know that. And I believe it. When Jesus confirms that, he says, do you believe? He says, yes, I do believe. And I hope that no matter what happens to you or to me, that mother's comportment and the religious faith will be the model that each of us follows. Because God knows what God is doing. Now what God is doing may not be what I wish. What God is doing may not be what you want or what you like or how you would have wanted God to respond. God will choose to respond as God knows best. I have no idea. I have no clue. Most of us will be very upset Maybe angry, they feel disappointed, like these two sisters, and even the Jews. Now, don't be, don't feel bad if you have to react, because I, I just admire this young lady, Mary. She gives it to Jesus. She expresses herself as she felt. Yes, she was angry. She was upset. First, she didn't want to get up. Then when finally she did, she spoke her mind. She let God know what was going on inside her. My hope is that you and I may be able to face our God and let him know we are scared. And let him know we are upset. And let him know we are disappointed. And let him know that we are afraid. And let him know that we need him. There's nothing wrong with that. It is speaking 
honestly to God as we feel. If we concern about somebody, we want to let God know we concern about them. It isn't lack of faith to tell God how we feel. It is an expression of trust and confidence that I love you so much that I can tell you what is going on inside me. I feel secure enough to tell you how I feel. So these two sisters model for us how to speak to God in prayer. Now, there are so many others right now who will be disappointed a lot. You saw how the crowds were disappointed. They were looking for ways to cajole Jesus. They said, could the man who opened the eyes of the blind not have done something? I am looking after all of these events. There are people who would ask us those questions. So you say you guys said you believe you have a God who can do all things. Why did that God not show up for you? Why did that God not stop your mother or your sister or your brother or your father or your son or yourself or someone else from passing? Why did that God not do it? They will ask us those questions. Now they will ask us those questions because they think just because our God can do all things, therefore our God will do all things. There are two different things. Our God can do all things, but our God also has a plan in his life, in his world, how the world must go. The Bible says he has marked out a day for every one of us. And if he chooses to take any one of us home, I believe it's for a good cause. It's for a good reason. And I can't question that. Nevertheless, I can tell him how I feel about him taking away my loved one. So when you begin to get all of those online messages telling you, I thought you guys said you believe in God, cajoling and making fun of your faith, that is time for you to witness, to witness to the one truth that Jesus has power over all things. Jesus did not have to raise up Lazarus. He did this just to demonstrate, I can do what I want to do if it's my, it's my plan to do it. So if it's in God's plan that you and I may see the other side of coronavirus, we will see it. But whatever God's plan is, we will say, here I am, Lord. I'm here to do your will. And whatever it is you will, I'll be okay with that. I'll be fine with it. For Lazarus, there are many who will be like Lazarus during this episode. They will not make it. But they may not make it on this side. I'm very confident that through our prayers, God will give them rest on the other side. Because Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Yeah. I am the resurrection. So I'm not just a life to restore people from, from dying or from death. But I am the resurrection. That means I have power on the other side to also give eternal life. So if your loved one doesn't make it, I pray they do. But if your loved one doesn't make it, just know that God's plan doesn't end here. God has a plan on the other side as well. Yeah. There is a plan for every one of us on the other side because we believe in the one God who, has, who controls and manages heaven and earth. And for all the doctors and our nurses, and all our EMS workers and our police department, especially those who have died, and those who are serving in fear, God hears you. As you walk into that patient, maybe without all the necessary equipment you need, fearing that something might happen to you, fearing that you may not go home, I pray that God will protect you. I pray that God will keep you. Because he knows what's in your heart. Mm -hmm. All you care about is just to serve God's children. May God keep you and may God bless your service. Mm -hmm. And for all of us, wherever we're worshiping from, let us feel that God doesn't abandon us. He may show up when we didn't expect. He may show up in what looks like he's late. But that God follows 
everything that is happening to you. He is with you. He is for you. And he is there for you. May God who has given us this challenge, give us the courage, the grace, the intellect to rise to this challenge. Because God has blessed us with an outstanding intellect as human beings. We can do the impossible because we are children of, an, of a God who does the impossible things. I pray that, that grace may come to the fore at this time. That God may help us overcome this challenge. As always, I'd like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God. That God loves you very much. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. God of life, whose spirit defeats sin and death daily. We bring our prayers before you today. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God, one God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, one of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him things we are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in the one, Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us pray for the church universal that it may proclaim eternal life to all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in authority, that they would not suffer those lacking power, but would instill an equal life to them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who Lord, hear our prayer. For those in medicine, for those in their own homes and homelands. We pray also for those who are quarantined. We pray for those who are in desperate situations. That they may be welcomed and healed and see love and their isolation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our own communities struggling. those our brothers and sisters, those unknown, who have lost people to this new coronavirus, that God will be with them. We pray for the frontline workers and all those up by the back who are in hospital, that they may all find comfort and new life in this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment and pray to God for our own home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for her. We pray for her to dedicate those prayers to your church. Confident that she will bring salvation and redemption to any and all. For our offering, we will sing the hymn, Lord, you have come to the seashore.
Professor Helper for the Confirmation, Professor Yogi Nathan for the Wine, the Doctor Fisher the Time, and Dr. Kinyan who become our student children. Bless the Doctor Yogi. Thank you for the Father, thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable. To God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teaching of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of the sacrifice. Through the sacrifice, O Lord, accept the prayers of the whole world. For all our brothers and sisters sickened by this virus, through the sacrifice of Lord, bring them healing and recovery. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always stands everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend. And as eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we have been. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like a dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat them, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and bring from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be offered for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, we confess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you both this bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Timothy our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have died across the world, especially those who have died here in our country, in Italy, in Spain. We beg, dear God, grant them rest with your holy saints. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs with eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us rise and pray in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. All the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of that peace. From us to you, wherever you are, may the peace of God find you. May the peace of God rest with you and on you. May the peace of God protect you and give you his mercy in you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. <laughs> Look up, my sisters and brothers. Look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus, the healer of our souls and our bodies, the life and the resurrection, the one who has power over all things. He is our Lord. He takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. Worry that you should enter my grave, for the Lord Lord only say the word, and my soul shall be filled. Now, and for all of us, wherever we are, who are unable to attend mass today because of the current situation, let us lift our hearts and our minds to God and ask for that grace of spiritual communion. Most glorious Lord, today you revealed your glory by visiting a family in their own home and performing the miracle of life. Wherever your children are, oh God, and are seeing and worshiping you in this Eucharist, may they feel the same power, the same effect of your presence in their life and in their homes, oh God. May they be a spiritual renewal in their lives. And may they find grace for every need, especially at this time.
let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion. We pray for all those who have received you spiritually. May they have the same effect in their lives and families, O oh Lord. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Let us bow our heads and ask God's blessings. Bless, O oh Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire they may receive by your generous gifts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our closing hymn, we will sing, we will sing the hymn, Abba, Father. joining us at this mass um, we hope to see you tomorrow at 12 noon uh, mass tomorrow at 12 noon may be recorded earlier then it will be broadcast at 12 in the afternoon once again I want to tell you we love you and God loves you very much the Lord be with you Thank you.